Hello everybody, my name is Roy Nemmer of MoondogiSelesti.com and welcome to another video. And this time around, it's all about the Argentine midfielders in the Premier League. Now, before we get into that, I know behind me it looks a little bit different. I'm still moving things around, still doing a bit of, uh, a bit of editing on my end. Uh, but I said, hey, you know what? The Premier League is starting. We got to get this video. Let's get to it. Uh, the Argentine goalkeepers and defenders video, that one is already up on the YouTube channel. I have included a link down below uh, for that. And let's get into it. We have four Argentine midfielders in the Premier League. We have Emiliano Buendia, Alexis McAllister, Gio Lo Celso, Manuel Lanzini. And we're going to talk about all of them and their chances of making the World Cup with the Argentina national team. So let's get to it. Let's kick things off with Alexis McAllister of Brighton. And if we take a look at his numbers with the national team, the 23-year-old has played five matches with Argentina, zero goals and zero assists. But the thing with McAllister is he just recently started getting regularly called up to the national team in 2022. There was that whole issue where a lot of uh, a lot of Argentine players were suspended because of the whole COVID situation and breaking protocols back in Brazil. So when Gio Lo Celso wasn't there, Alexis McAllister was there. And McAllister has featured in five matches uh, for the national team. And he was even part of the last match, that 5-0 win against Estonia. Uh, so his chances of making the World Cup for Argentina this time around, I would say maybe medium. Uh, not not too, too high, but not low either. He could be emerging as one of the guys that can potentially, potentially cement his place uh, with the national team. Uh, we still have August and September and October, so we still have about two to three months left where McAllister could really, really push for a place in the national team. I'm not saying he's going to be there, but I'm not saying he's out with a chance. He's out with no chance either. It is a possibility. It is a possibility. So if we take a look at his numbers last year with Brighton in the Premier League, 33 matches, five goals, two assists. I mean, not a terrible return. He did play the majority of the matches for them. And like I said, he has two to three months to get his uh, to get into the national team. And if he were to get there, he, you know, in all likelihood would not be a starter. He would be uh, a substitute. Although when Lo Celso wasn't there, McAllister was the one that was starting. So who knows what Scaloni has planned with, uh, with McAllister. And he was there uh, last year at the Olympics. Uh, McAllister was there. Not a great showing for the, uh, for the team over in Tokyo. But still, he was there and he's part of the national team right now. So let me know, uh, would you take McAllister at the World Cup? And if yes, in place of whom? Moving on from one midfielder to another, and this is a midfielder video, so it's all midfielders. Next up, we have Emiliano Buendia, the 25-year-old uh, with Aston Villa. His first Argentina cap actually came versus Colombia this year in 2022. His first and only match for Argentina was this year. He was part of preliminary lists in the past, of World Cup qualifiers and everything. He was never selected, ultimately did not end up playing up until this year. Year. So he has been in and out of, uh, of call-ups by Lionel Scaloni. And we had high hopes. I had very, very high hopes for him last season with Aston Villa. It was a lot of, you know, stop and go, stop and go with him in, uh, in England uh, last year. But hopefully this time around, he can, he can get, you know, more minutes, more consecutive minutes and, uh, and play very, very well uh, with Aston Villa last season. He had 35 matches, so he did play a lot, a lot of the matches. Four goals, six assists. I'll be very honest, I was expecting a slightly better return from him. I was expecting him, you know, at least a 15 to 20 goal uh, contribution, goals and assists in total. We didn't get that. We got half of that. Uh, we got 10 in total. Uh, so Buendia, his chances of making the World Cup, I would say pretty low, to be honest, in my opinion. I don't think his chances are, are high. I think Alexis McAllister has a much higher chance than Buendia of making the World Cup. Uh, but Buendia also, you know, pretty versatile as well. So McAllister might be more of a, you know, central midfielder, but Buendia more versatile, can certainly play central, can also play on the wing as well. So more, versati more versatility from, the, uh, from Buendia. 
But like I said, I'm not getting my hopes up for Buendia. But let me know. Out of the two, who would you pick? If you had to pick one of them for the World Cup, would you go with Buendia? Or would you go with Alexis McAllister? So that's two out of four. We're halfway there. And the third midfielder that we have is actually someone that might not even play in the Premier League this season. But hey, we're 24 hours away from the start of the league. He's still there. He's still with Tottenham. It's none other than Giovanni Lo Celso. Gio Lo Celso, the 26-year-old, uh, out of all these four midfielders, he's the one uh, that, you know, his place in the World Cup is secured. Uh, and he's the one that's played the most matches. So he has played 39 matches for the Argentina national team. Two goals, eight assists. And the thing about Lo Celso and, and, you know, a lot of midfielders, if not every midfielder, is, you know, I throw these numbers out there. I show these numbers. But you cannot judge Lo Celso based off his goals and assists because he brings much more than that. For example, if we look at Lautaro Martinez's goal versus uh, Colombia in the semifinals of the Copa America, it was Lo Celso's killer pass uh, into Messi, into the penalty area, and then Messi played it over to Lautaro and Lautaro scored. So that play, that pass by Lo Celso doesn't register as an assist, right? But that goal doesn't happen without... Lo Celso's pass, which took three, four Colombian players out of it. So that's the thing about, uh, you know, about these numbers. Sometimes it can be misleading, although just to give us a bit of an idea. And uh, Lo Celso, part of the Argentina national team, obviously, which won the Copa America, as I mentioned, as well as the Finalissima. And uh, he played great in, in both tournaments. And the Finalissima played very, very well uh, in the final. And last year, he was on loan at Villarreal, made the semifinals of the Champions League. And if we take a look at his numbers last season in La Liga, 16 goals, sorry, yeah, 16 matches, one goal, one assist. And he was extremely important to that Villarreal side. And, you know, according to reports, it looks like he could be re-signing with them. He could be signing with them, staying with them permanently, moving away from Tottenham Hotspur. If not, Fiorentina are another team which are reportedly in the running uh, to sign Lo Celso. So that's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen with Lo Celso moving forward this season. There's not, you know, not too, too long left in the transfer window. And he's someone that does need the minutes. He does need the matches. If he does stay with Tottenham, in all likelihood, probably will not be starting, might get a couple of minutes here and there as a substitute. And for Scaloni, that might not be good enough, although we know that Lo Celso is certainly part of that midfield three, along with Paredes and Rodrigo De Paul. Let me know, where would you like to see Lo Celso go? If it's not Tottenham, would you like to see him stick with Villarreal or maybe make a move over to Italy and play with Fiorentina? Let me know down below. Love reading the comments. And the fourth midfielder. So we got Buendia, we got McAllister, we got Lo Celso, and we got none other than Manuel Lanzini. Uh, Lanzini, already 29 years old, and he's had a tumultuous career, really a bit of a roller coaster uh, ride for him in regards to the Argentina national team. Five matches, one goal, zero assists. And he was initially part of that 2018 World Cup team. So he was selected. He was part of that final 23 uh, for the World Cup over in Russia, but a massive, massive injury right before the World Cup. That kept him out of it, and he ended up missing the tournament. Uh, this time around, probably will not make it. Uh, his own goal, uh, his only goal, sorry, for Argentina came against Italy, and that was prior to the 2018 World Cup. So uh, the only goal for him there. And with West Ham United, if we take a look at last season, 30 matches. So he did play once more, just like everybody else, you know, the majority of the matches for their teams, five goals, three assists. And he started off last season extremely, you know, in form, very, very in form. If he wasn't scoring, he was assisting. If he wasn't assisting, he was creating plays and he was contributing and he was playing very, very well. And then he just kind of hit that dry patch where, you know, it wasn't really going for him. And that's been, unfortunately, uh, a recurring issue with Lanzini because of the injuries. Lanzini will be on fire and then we'll get that patch of injury and he'll be out for a significant amount of time. And uh, that was what kept him out of uh, 2018, even though he was selected, as I mentioned. Now, this time around, his chances of making the World Cup, I would say, are very, 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 very slim. I don't expect him to be there. I think it would be 
even surprising if he was part of the preliminary list, to be honest. Uh, I know there's been some chit-chat, there's been some rumors of him in the past making the preliminary team, making the, the team for a qualifier, and ultimately it hasn't really happened, right? Now, I don't expect this to change. Unfortunately for Lanzini, I don't expect him to be at the World Cup. He's still a tremendous talent, when healthy, when fit. He scored some great, great goals in his career, including one uh, last season for West Ham United. So, when on form, he's great. Will he get selected for the World Cup? Probably not. Probably not. But let me know, would you select him for the World Cup? Would you go with Manuel Lanzini in the World Cup for Argentina? And if yes, in place of whom? Who would you... Uh, Play some, uh, who would you select them ahead of? And uh, those are the four midfielders, the four Argentine midfielders. As I mentioned um, at the start of the video, there is a video, it's down below. I put in the link where we spoke about the goalkeepers and the defenders. I did a separate video talking about Lisandro Martinez joining Manchester United. This is the midfielders. We have one more video to go we are, where we are going to talk about the Argentine strikers in the Premier League. And trust me, trust me, you don't want to miss it. Uh, Two players, one in all likelihood, knock on wood, will be at the World Cup, and one uh, probably won't be, but a lot of people kind of want him to be, and it, it's, it's going to be a great video. Keep your eyes open. Uh, it's going to drop uh, very, very soon as well. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know. Would you select all four of these players for the World Cup? Would you select one of them, two of them, three of them? If so, who and why? Let me know. I love reading the comments and love interacting with everybody. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that notifications button to never miss a thing and, be, and to be the first person notified as soon as a new video drops. Once more, my name is Roy Nemmer of MundoAbisLeste.com and thank you for watching.